How you doing today? I'm Reverend C.L. Butler, part of the great ministry of the Kingdom Builders Covenant Exchange. I thank you for just uh, allowing me to be you know, live stream with you or in your homes or wherever you might be today. Uh, I thank God for this uh, Passover weekend. Um, just thank God for, you know, just uh, so many things have happened through the week. and. Uh, Definitely want to give a shout out to all the nurses and doctors that's out there dealing with the coronavirus. Uh, we want to make sure we pray for them. And also, I just want to give a definite shout out to my wife and my children in this time of season that we're in. Uh, but I just bless you today that whatever word that God has for you today, I pray God that you are in the right place of mind. Uh, you know, some people uh, dealing with so many issues at this time of this season. Uh, so many lost, lost souls have, you know, uh, died or whatever it may be that happened through this season. So many deaths. And uh, you've been probably wondering uh, what kind of word that you can give us. So I pray God this word will help you. What we'll do first, we'll read the word of God and then we'll pray. Today I'm coming from Matthew chapter 28, verses one. And I pray this word uh, impact your life. Uh, I hope it gets down in your soul so it can be a blessing to you and your family. And, you know, just, just let, let us enjoy the word together. Let's dig together. And the word of God come out of Matthew chapter 28, verses one. And it reads like this. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the day, the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and her mother went to see the tomb. Mm. Let me read that again. Matthew chapter 28, verses one. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary, Magdalene and other Mary went to see the tomb. I want to kind of come to you today from this topic that God had gave me earlier this week, uh, really yesterday, um, on Saturday day, a very powerful word um, that I, I believe that is part of best for this time. Um, the title of this word is After the Storm. Um, I know we probably have been through a lot of things in our life, but I believe after the storm, there is promise. Let's pray. Lord, first off, I want to give you honor for everything that you're doing for your people today, God. I ask you, uh, whatever uh, it may be today, that this word be set down uh, in our hearts, God, in our minds, in our hands, and feet, God. Allow this word to ring on in our ears, God, uh, when we going through, God, or having a bad day, Father God. But God, I ask you to touch every soul today, Father God. Touch every mind, touch every preacher, every leader, God. In a deacon or usher, or whatever it may be, God, or in, through this pandemic, Father God, I ask you to touch the doctors and uh, RNs and nurses, God. Those are on the front line, policemen, um, the grocery stores, and all those all over the world, Father God, that you heal their mind and soul, God. But God, allow me to sit down today, Father, and allow you to step up today so this word can go forth in your name, God. God, I thank you for everything that you're doing today. Let me chant, sit down, and let God step up. God, I thank you for the decrease, for the increase today, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm. After the storm. In this context, it brings us to mind where they was talking at the end of the Sabbath day, as it began in the dawn towards the first day of the week. Mm. The one day after the Sabbath, the Jews reckoned the day of circumstance through the Sabbath as one of the Christians first carry out of the same practice. That means pretty much 
uh, we celebrate this occasion every year. Um, and uh, we are serving this new occasion from home. Um, so many things has happened uh, at this particular time in this uh, gospel of uh, Matthew chapter 21. So many things has happened that just occurred from after the storm. We realize in this text, we are coming at the first week of the Passover, a time where Jesus uh, got whipped 39 lashes. Then after he got whipped 39 lashes, he went to Adonis Hill where he bled to death and gave up the ghost. And not knowing when he said it was finished, he bowed his head and the darkness covered over the deep. So many things that happened at the, after this storm that had happened. Um, Judas just killed himself. Peter, shamefully, still wondering, you know, the thing that Jesus had told him that he will deny him when the, <laughs> The crow, when he denied him three times. I, I just imagine all these different phases of events, him in the part before he got to the cross, when they asked um, who they wanted to crucify. Was it Jesus or Barabbas, you know? They said Jesus. And I can imagine being the scriptures being fulfilled because what Jesus was doing after this rage of folks uh, spinning upon him. So many different things that's happening between this time of him being crucified. So many people that he healed and raised from the dead that walked away from him. I can imagine after this storm, you know, so many things can happen. Prime example, it was something in particular when I read this scripture that caught my attention, where it said after, now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn. Mm. The dawn is, something that resembles a new beginning. The dawn um, represent a new start. The dawn represent a new birth. Because you just got to remember now, Jesus died upon the cross at this moment. The Roman soldier pierced him in the side to make sure he was dead. Not knowing that normally when you have a crucifixion, normally they break the legs of those they, who they crucified. But he gave up the ghost before they broke his legs. How prophetic was that? Jesus having all power gave up the ghost. The thing that he taught his disciples what was going to happen in this time of season that he must die. As he talked about how a seed must go into the ground and, and die. Now I understand through all these different events, like right now, storms that we have in our own lives. I can tell you about a, a natural storm. We have three different types of storms. We have thunderstorms, tropical storms, and blizzards. You have three different types of storms in the natural, but you also have a spiritual storm that you're dealing with on day-to-day -day basis. Because one thing I've learned from my own experience I've seen a lot of storms in my life. 
I can imagine back in the day when I was uh, working at this one retailer, we had to go down to Houston to help out because it was a great storm that had went through Houston, Texas, where it tore up everything. The buildings, the house, it was flood all over the place. It was so bad at that time. But the thing about it, we got an opportunity to bless them after the storm. One thing I can tell you that you're gonna have storms in your life. But can I also can tell you it's a storm don't last always. Not knowing that, you know, we we, we go through our uh, daily living. I can imagine how that some things that we go through, like our own family or our marriage or our children, we call that a storm. Not knowing that, you know, if, what if we lose a loved one or lose a sister or a brother or aunt or a grandmother? We call that a storm. Not knowing that it's something that rains slow. One thing that I can tell you when 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 it, when, it, when that real good rain, that good storm that comes in, it has the lightning and the rain and it is it just turn up everything. That's what storms do. It turns up everything that you're connected to. You're wondering, how is it, preacher, that in the time where Jesus was, every person that was with him got scattered? Because I just told you a moment ago that when a storm happens, its job is to scatter you. It's unexpected. The dryness in the air and the coolness at the same time causes a hurricane. And I know in your own house, you you got so many different things are happening in your life that 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 you just wondering, preacher, I, I just lost my job. Oh, and then another situation where your daughter ran away from home. Man, all these different types of storms. And even, even, even the one good storm that you lost your mother. Man, I think that's probably the hardest storms that you, you can deal with. A loss of a loved one. Betrayal, adultery, whatever it may be. Whatever those storms are, Jesus has a remedy for your storm. One thing I, I've learned in past time that after a storm, they call this one uh, rescue team called FEMA. When the thing is so bad, they come out and help the community. When they lose about, you know, if, if like 10,000 or 12,000 people are out of lights or uh, they don't have food or shelter, that's when FEMA come in. And I can just see how they have a different setups where, you know, if a family had lost a loved one or uh, their house got torn down or uh, it, there's so many different things that, 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 that we, 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 we encounter at those times. When not knowing that you can see the storm from afar out. But a lot of times we don't pay attention to the thing that's coming towards us. How can you say that, preacher? Because when Peter, when they asked Peter, do, yeah, we know you, was you one of the disciples that was with him and he denied Jesus three times. Man, I, I can see how Judas was when Jesus, when they was having <laughs> the time where they was breaking bread together. He said the one that he break bread with, he, he passes to, that's the one that was going to deny him. We had, 
two people at the same place. One that sold them out, and then you had one that denied him. He knew that the storm was coming. His mind was already prepared for the dawning. But are, is your mind prepared for the dawn? Because sometimes some storms linger over when they shouldn't linger over. Because the darkness has moved out the way, so the dawning came forth. I can see where after a storm, everything is all over the place. You don't see what, what you used to see when you went to the house. You notice everything is so chaotic. But I believe that God uses storms to bring you to your new beginning. We just read earlier in Matthew 28 and 1 was the first week after the third day. Mary Magdalene went to the, the tomb and found out that the master wasn't there. Mm. Hallelujah. I can imagine after seeing all this punishment, watching her, her, her master go through all these weapons and dying and, and, and watching him bleed from his hands and his feet and from his, from his side. That was a one of those category six storms that they had. Not knowing that he was preparing their minds for the opportunity because he knew where he was going. He taught them in the word of God how and what, what was going to happen. Matter of fact, for the last two weeks, God has been having me praying about clarity and preparations. Jesus was giving them confirmation for them to prepare for what's, what was going to happen. They teach us how they give a, 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 a emergency safe kit when troubled times happen. Like I told you earlier, that's what FEMA is for, for unexpected situations when a bad storm comes. So after this thing that happened, those young men were scattered. Not knowing that the dawn have came. It wasn't dark no more when the, when the Son of Man was lifted up to God. I can imagine all the naysayers that heard him preach in the synagogues, laughing. Even, even the time where the, even the Roman soldier that told Pilate, that you remember what he said? He said he was going to rise up the third day. And they put a soldier in front of the door of that stone. So they, they thought in their mind they're going to come back and steal him, but don't even know that those guys were scattered during this storm that they had. Mm, yes. They use every measure to try to stop God, but could not stop him. Whatever storm that you're in, it's an after this, after that. Because the Bible says, after it was done, that woman went into that tomb where the angel was there with her says, he's not here. Mm. Young man, young lady, 
God had a word for me to tell you today. It's dawning. It's a new beginning. God died upon the cross so you can have a new abundance of life, a new fresh start. Yeah, your, your loved ones probably died or your father died or your mother died or whoever died. But my Bible tells me in Jude 1 and 24 that now unto him that's able to keep you from falling did something that has in history that 500 some witnesses seen him go through. They, that they can show that what he did was a miracle. And not knowing that he was teaching the disciples all these different things. And believe me, you'd be surprised, like I told you earlier, when the Roman, remember what he said, you'd be surprised. People be eavesdropping on your conversation. Preacher, how, how, how do you know all this? Because I, I've been in a storm. No one is exempt from the storm. But the good thing about it, God can take you out of the storm. Because after the storm means preparation. Sometimes storms come to scatter us. So we won't have thinking, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. Like at this pandemic that we have right now. People had plans to go to Jamaica or go to Disney World or go to Africa or Australia or China and all these different places, but God had changed the plan. And we're wondering, will a storm be ever over? Sir, I can definitely tell you, the storm will pass. But after this storm, he have an assurance for you. Like in Psalm 68, 19, that he loads us up with benefits daily. Don't lose your hope on the storm that you went through. That storm was to build you, not to crush you. Because you got to remember, they crushed him. They beat him half. They beat him to, to death. But he got up. He didn't allow darkness to come over his, his situation. Preacher, but I'm not Jesus. Now, I know you're not Jesus. But he gave us a picture that whatever situation that you're in, there's a dawning coming. That's a new day coming for you. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that he gives us new grace every morning. If you can make it past the night and make it to the dawning, those storms don't last always. Just, just know that Peter Thomas and all the rest of the disciples were scattered. I can imagine Peter somewhere fishing because like, I can't believe I denied the person that I've seen do miracles. But the Bible says after that, if you read it for yourself between Matthew 28 and one through what, so on, if you can read it for your own self and see the angel told Mary to tell the disciples, he risen from the dead. And that storm didn't take him under, but put him over like the eagle he was. That's what think about eagles when they fly. When a storm they see, they go above the storm. 
<laughs> and then make sure you, you go get Peter and the, and the rest of the guys and the disciples. I can believe how Peter was. His, his shame has broke him down because the master told him that he will deny him three times, but he still was looking for him. Still looking for Thomas, not knowing that we knew that Judas was going to kill himself. It was foretold in the scriptures where the, the scriptures was fulfilled because what Judas did. He was talked about before he was even born, 400 some years before he was even born. Mm. Lord have mercy. I pray that whatever storm that you just got out of, that God give you a new dawning, a new opportunity in life, a new, new start. Don't allow your storm get away what you're trying to do for the new day. Yeah, just a lot of different storms. But just know, you just made it out of this storm. I thank you for, for allowing me to speak a word over your life. That when you went to the, that tomb, there was borrowed. He went there. Just know. Everything that was in the tomb that was dead just became into a newness. That dead thing stayed in the tomb. So what if that man walked away? So what if that young lady walked away? Believe me, God knew what he was doing. I can testify to that. I have a beautiful wife right now. I had the worst storm of my life. I didn't think I was going to make it, but I kept hearing that still voice in my head. This storm is almost over. Just make it to the dawning. I thank God for that, that I didn't lose my mind in the storm that I was in. I thank God for Jesus for getting up that day. Because every time I remember that, he always told me, I did it for you, son. I did it for every living soul. It might not mean nothing to you, but for those that do, it means something too. They thank God for it. That they got a new opportunity Young man that is trying to do their business. And you're probably saying, man, because of this pandemic, my business has gone under. But believe me, behind that storm, there's a promise. Don't give up. Don't give in. Please, sir. Please, ma'am. God did it for you. Don't give your child over. Don't lose your mind. Don't pull the trigger. It's dawning. You can start over. I know you put your, all your money into it, but God got something better. It might be the best thing that you ever had, but sometimes God do things. Storms are never, it's never, it never feels good. Chains don't never feel good when the father is taking you through a storm. It's not good when, when the father watch you go through it and not knowing he watched his son go through it. Watched him get beat. 
where he bled to death, but still gathered his strength to carry the cross for you and I. I'm extending my hand today to you. Please, sir, please, young lady. If you want the Lord of this world to be the Lord of your life, so he can be your insurance when a storm arises. But believe me, it will be a storm coming. It ain't always gonna be sunny. But there's a storm coming ahead. For those that have the opportunity to watch this, I pray that God be with you. For those that want the Lord Jesus for their life, say the small prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come in my life right now. Come into my heart right now, Father. Come into my mind. I give my body to you today, Father, as a living sacrifice. It might not be the best, God, but it's all I have. I've done a lot of wrong things in my life, God. But this day, if you can give me a, a little bit more strength to pass the test, not knowing you pass your test, but you gotta up. I know I can get up. If you said that prayer, I believe God met you there. And I thank you for allowing me to bring this word to your heart. Because at the end of the day, God recovers the thing that you lost. The disciples thought they lost Jesus, but he met them and he told them that he had to die so we can live. Thank you for watching Kingdom Builders Covenant Exchange Ministries. My name is Reverend C.L. Butler. I thank you. God bless you.